treatment holds and every Pharisee. You came for hypocrites, even one like me. You carried sin and shame, the guilt of every man, the weight of all I've done, nailed into your head.
my weakness, God. You are my hope when I have none, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for the, what you continue to do, God. And thank you for what you're going to do in my life and my family and my situations, God. I trust in you. I trust in my hope. I trust in that solid rock that I stand on. Hallelujah. Somebody give praise to God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We lift your name, Jesus. We invite you into this place, God. We praise you. We thank you for all that you are. Worthy are you, King Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are ruler of all, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you for calling me yours. Thank you for calling me yours. Hallelujah. You want to rival me with a melody. And you surround me with a song. Of deliverance from my enemies until all my fears are gone. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Hallelujah. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, you have chosen me. Your love has called my name. I've been born again into your family. It's your blood that flows through my veins. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I have a new name. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. My past doesn't define me anymore. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Hallelujah. I am a child of God.
chain to break break every chain break every chain break every chain to break every chain break every chain break every chain break every chain we're children of God every chain some of you may not experience this before but if you're trying to figure out what this feeling is it's called the Holy Ghost somebody says spirit same thing but heaven, this is the presence of the living God reaching into hearts changing those that are broken and wounded and those that have fallen down and those that are facing unsurmountable objects I know God is bigger than all of that are you ready for God to go ahead and fix that right now come on everybody just turn around behind you and say the past is over my future begins right now. The presence of God is working in me this moment. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Just continue to praise Him for a moment, if you will. Continue to praise Him, if you will, right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Gino, come on up. all over say that one more time it's all over it's all over only in your presence God. only in your presence God. thank you come on saints just for a moment just point your hand this way and say Lord we we're your children we're here for each other we have each other's back but you have our future you're erasing the past and the hurts of the past, the losses of the past that cannot be explained. Hurt is too deep. Tears are not enough. But joy comes in the morning. And this is a brand new morning for a brand new future. Father, I thank you for your presence and for your peace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. There was a word that came this week to somebody going through a tough time. And God said, the same place where you cried. You're going to dance. <laughs> Crying's about over. Dancing is getting ready to begin. We're not talking about just showing off. We're talking about celebrating because we can't stand still in the joy of a brand new beginning. I speak peace right now in Jesus' name. Perfect peace. All for your glory. And I thank you for it. Thank you for it, Lord. Can everybody stay together? Everything's going to be all right. I've known him since before he was here. <laughs> but how many know the hard things in life are when you see people that you love hurting and there's only so much you can do? How many like sometimes just to walk up to somebody and just grab them and just fix it? Just hug them and just squeeze out all the pain? See, God can do that. We can't, but he can. That's why there's a new beginning taking place in this room today. Amen. I love you so much. God bless you. Glad you're here. Thank you very much. While I'm down here, can I just touch you? You've been set up. Did you know that? <laughs> if 
Father, I just thank you today for my brand new friend. I looked over at him, Father, while we were in praise and celebrating and just talking to you how good you are. Hoping everybody understands how awesome you are. And I saw my new friend walking through a new door. Leaving behind some elements and things and feelings and emotions of the past. Ready to live again. Enjoy his calling. His gifting. Your presence. I want you to affirm in his spirit today that you, you've got this. And you called him. You called him. And his gift is unique. No one else can do it. But he will fulfill it to the completion. And you're going to work out all the details and everything that's surrounding him that tries to take it or hinder it. You're going to move it out of the way. Shake everything that has to be shaken. Because only the kingdom is going to remain. I thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Glad you're here. Amen. You may be seated for a moment if you'd like. Let's give the praise team an appreciation. We don't often... I think appreciate quite enough, but I feel like it, it's time for us sometimes just to step back and say, thank you, God. I want to explain something today because there's some exciting things going on. We, 21 days ago, the Lord spoke a word in this room, and he said, I want my children to write down a decree of what they're willing to have me shake out of their life. How many of there's some things you can't get it to go? <laughs> okay. How many of there's sometimes there's people you can't make them leave? I've been in a courthouse long enough, I, I know I can say that. How many of there's some things in our life you can't change it? God can. There are some things that only God can vibrate it out of your life. He can move it out of your life. And the word of the Lord came at the beginning of the year, and he said, everything that can be shaken, that uh, has to be shaken, will be shaken, and all that will remain in your life is the kingdom. How many like to just have joy and peace? And everybody say righteousness. Well, what is that? That means right standing with God. Joy. Anybody like to have not happiness? Happiness comes because you got a raise or or you got to go to McDonald's twice or something. That's not that's not joy. That's happiness. But how many know joy is there when you're going through hard times? When you're crying at the same time and grieving at the same time, you still have the joy of God. And then he said you have the peace of God, which means he, he gives you the kingdom in the Holy Ghost. Can I just tell you something that, that we're kind of afraid as uh, people are gonna label us as something? There, there's people that think Pentecost means holy rollers. If you say Holy Ghost, most churches don't want that. They, 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 they don't want that because that means you're going to jump up and down or cry or act silly or something. People going to shove you or something. That has nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is God's spirit. If you want me to define it, it's love. Anybody afraid of love? Then don't be afraid of the Holy Ghost. When we came to town 32 years ago or whatever, churches in town said, oh, they're those holy roller people, those Holy Ghost people. <laughs> they're probably offering dogs on the altar or something. All kinds of junk went out that we were doing when really all we were doing was healing the sick, raising the dead, and casting out devils. What I mean by that, we were fixing people's lives by God's presence. And it hit me really strong. Sometimes... God's got really got a bad rap because I don't know what church other people what they all do but I, I've been around about every type of a denomination sometime and I realize some people don't want God's spirit there why go to church if you don't want him there oh but we don't want people to act up <laughs> amen God's got a bad rap I said, well if you just called him Jehovah I'd love him well, yeah, but he has a spirit. He has life. And without his Holy Spirit, there's never been an answer or a victory or a salvation or a miracle outside the presence of God. So I'm not ashamed of his spirit. Amen. Call it ghost. Call it what you will. It's brought me a mighty long way. It's raised me up from the deathbed. It's protected me from, from death threats. It's brought me through heartaches and nothing else. It's his spirit. How many of you are not afraid of the Holy Ghost? Well, you know, I'm kind of scared because I saw somebody fall down. Okay. <laughs> Did they get up? I saw somebody get loud. Have you been to the Reds game? I should have said Ohio State. Come on. How many of you realize it's all right to celebrate? It's all right to be happy and be a Christian. It's all right to have joy. Come on, somebody say, I want that. 
So I'm just going to set you up for this because when God spoke to our heart, he said, over the next 21 days, I want you to seek me and pray over those things that have to get out of your way. How many understand? Sometimes we just need some stuff to change. Okay, can I take a minute and ask you, has anybody had a change in the last three weeks? Has anybody had some things stirred? You want to testify, Tabby? It's all right if you cry. Come on up. Amen. Mom and Daddy didn't give me a girl, so I just pick all the young ladies and call them baby sisters if I can. It's all right if you cry. So a couple of weeks ago, um, where I work, I've been there for four years. Um, I started out as a temporary, um, and I got promoted and into a position that is, you know, very, it was hard for me, but I tried. I, I don't miss work. I came in early, stayed late, um, worked on weekends, did the best I could. And then a couple Fridays ago, there was six of us that got called, and basically I lost my job. Um, and I was devastated because that hurts. And I had a choice to take a severance pay or to stay at my job, but to go work on the production floor. I've never worked the floor, I work in the office. So I had to take a week off and of course I've prayed and listened to my Jesus music and you know, why me? Um, and I, you know, I did question why me because I, I try and I just, I don't understand and I still don't understand, but I just keep believing and trusting God that he has a plan, but it, it's hard to see that. So I decided to go ahead and go back to work for $4 less than what I make. So, you know, there's a pay cut, there's, but I'm, I was afraid to take the severance package because, you know, I have bills, we all have bills. So it's just, it's a lot thrown at me. And every day I still pray just the same way I did with my other job before I get out of my car. To Jesus just help me because it's hard. I'm almost 50 years old and doing production work is hard. And I admire anybody that does it. But I have to take eight or nine ibuprofen a day just to, it's, it's horrible. But I, I'm, I'm thankful that God gave me a choice. And like I said, I know he has a plan for yes, me, but right now yes, it, it is hard for me to see. So I appreciate if everybody would just pray for strength and guidance for me. Stand right here. You know what I enjoy about what she's saying? She's not waiting till it's done to testify. She's praising God and trusting God in the middle of being demoted or dropped in price, in, in salary. Let's pray together. Father, we ask you to finish this because we know you are. But most of all, we ask you to give her peace to know that she's on a journey. And you're shaking everything that has to be shaken so the kingdom and prosperity can be established in her life. Everybody that agrees, say in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Say out loud, God's got this. Come on, say it. God's got this. Anybody else in the room that something's changing for the good? Anybody seeing changes in your life? Anybody seeing some things starting to move? Come on, say it. It's not finished. That's all right. Everything that can be shaken will be, and even if it's not finished. Everybody say, it's not finished, but it will be. Now, I want you to listen very closely. I want to give you some things. I've got a lot to share in the next five minutes. 10 who give me 15 <laughs> it's like an auctioneer who's going to give me 20 I think I need just a few moments but I want to say something God spoke to my heart and he said I want you to tell my children that there is a spiritual tsunami coming so you don't know what a tsunami is okay do you remember not long ago when I think it was uh, around Alaska we had a tsunami that came in all the way to the northern California coast what happens in an earthquake is the plates of the earth under the foundation start moving and when they begin to break and separate, it causes a land shift. And when that happens, it shakes everything above it. In a tsunami, it's much the same. But when it happens under the ocean, under the sea, the plates of, of rock and the place of the foundation under the, under the ocean are broken. And it causes a drop. It causes a shifting under the foundation. Everybody say foundation. And when that happens, it causes the water. Everybody say the water to begin to move. I'm going to shout right now because of what I'm going to say. 
And what happens in the tsunami where the water was a few hours ago, it is not going to remain there because the foundation has been shaken. And once the foundation is shaken, it begins to let the water begin to move toward the land. I remember watching as the tsunami hit the coastlines, and we watched boats that were docked. They started rising in the tide, and as it did, those boats landed in the middle of the land, and houses were lifted up and put a few blocks away. God said, I'm not going to do a physical tsunami. Those are natural things. I'm going to do a spiritual tsunami where I'm going to break the foundational things that have robbed you and been underneath your feet a long time. How many of you know only God can shift the plates underneath the ocean? And only God can shift some of the junk you've been standing on and having to walk through and go through. Am I right? And God said, when that happens, I'm going to let my water, which is my word, which is me, begin to come across your dry land. And I'm going to move things that once were a part of the outer realm to the inner realm. And I'm going to cause the water of the word to begin to work in your life. I'm going to shake everything that has to be shaken and rearrange for my people. Are you ready for God to shake everything? Can I give you a caution? Be very careful what choices you make right now. Never make a choice in the middle of an earthquake. Never make a choice just because of emotions. You have a future. Emotions don't last. Your future will. Be very careful what choices you make Starting today. We could go home on that and shout for a month. How many of you realize everything that can be shaken, moved out of your life, is beginning to move? Don't get upset when things change. We have been in the middle of a government shutdown for the last, what, weeks. Amen? I said, well, I don't understand all that. You won't. We've been in the middle of a lot of changes. Am I right? They just signed bills in New York and some cities that you can take a baby from the mother's womb and either kill it coming out or or let it live, and that's okay. And legislators are saying they're dancing in the street celebrating that we get to kill babies. Look at me. Does that make sense? And they want to tell us if we love God that we're Hitler. We've killed more innocent babies just willing abortions. Then Hitler and Stalin put together killed. But because it's legal, it's okay. The Bible says in the last days men will call wrong right and right wrong. I don't care how long you do wrong, it's never going to be called right. Amen. Amen? And as long as we do right, the devil can never make it be wrong. How many of you are willing, look at me, shaking's taking place. The government is changing. The economy's changing. Everything in this world is beginning to change. I don't want you to get scared. I want you to get faith. Because the righteous are going to be standing when everything else shakes away. The believers in God are going to make it. Come on, somebody say, I'm going to make it. I came too far not to make it. Come on. I I love what they were saying earlier in the song, and I appreciate it so much. Thank God for the... How many glad that we get to keep Daniel and Beth? Amen. Okay. I I love them so... I'm happy for him to get the house, but you know what? It's all the other stuff that God is doing along with the house. It's the blessings and the gift of God and the calling of God upon their life that is going to be fulfilled. And we get to be close enough to benefit by those gifts. Amen. All you jealous folks say amen. I know God knows how to give you a house too. He knows how to fix what's wrong in your life. So what I want to tell you, God is saying that he's going to shake all the foundational things. And can I just say it? When the water of God comes to shore. Like a tsunami, when that water comes and hits you in such a powerful way that you can't get out of the way and it moves you to places you could not get on your own, are you ready for God to have the last word? Are you ready for God to let the tsunami of the Spirit have its right away and its will? I I don't know. Sometimes people say, well, you know, we're getting ready to have a fight. We're getting ready to to duke it out. We're getting ready to to go into a conflict. I just got to tell you, saints of God, it's on. The battle is on. It's not coming. It's already here. The war against your family, your health, your future, your eternity, that battle is already raging. It's not going to come. It's here. And you have to make up your mind, what side are you going to be on? I am glad to be on the Lord's side, and I'm glad he's on my side. He goes before me, he follows behind me, and he brings forth the uh, the fullness of the blessing. 
All the earthly foundations are also being shaken. I would never have thought as a child raised in, in California that I would live to see some of the changes that are happening in our world. But I want to just say this. My God has not changed one bit. He has not and will not change his ideas, his plan, and his purpose. It can't be stopped because of legislature. It doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Republican or a Democrat or an autocrat. It doesn't matter what you are. If you belong to God, everything is going to work together for the good and for the glory of God. Everybody say it with me. The storm is coming, and it's a good storm. Most of the time without a lot of Terrible looking stuff, we would never change stuff. When God pulls the rug out from under you, it's because he wants you to know you have hardwood floors under it. Okay. All the hardwood floor people look at me like, I don't want that. I want my carpet. That's okay. I want you to go to the book of Acts for just two hours and 43 minutes. I want you to eat quick because we're going to beat the Presbyterians to the restaurant today. My friends. Acts 19. I want to explain what's getting ready to happen is God's power and His Spirit is coming back to the church. Okay. Don't shout me down while I'm preaching good. Well, Brother Young, we've, we've already got all we need. Well, some don't. It's not criticism, it's just observation. The Bible said that the watchman on the wall is responsible to tell you danger comes. And as the watchman, if I don't tell you that I'm responsible for not warning you. Everybody say warning needs to be given. There's a lot of things I'd like to share, and, and some of it is not timely, and some of it is too heavy for young Christians, some things that just are really hard to even dissolve, even if you've uh, been in the ministry all of your life. Um, in Acts 19, there's a, a perfect example of what God is getting ready to do. And I like this because there's so many people that get, get really bummed out because we talk about spiritual things. I want you to understand, and again, I'm going to say it until we get it in our heart. You don't have to be afraid of the Holy Spirit. You don't have to be afraid of God's Spirit. Now, there's been a lot of weird things that people have done in the name of God's Spirit. But how many know God's Spirit is perfect? Amen. It's pure. Am I right? Just because somebody abuses it doesn't mean we should throw it away. As a matter of fact, I want to declare this because some people say, well, I like Jesus, so I'm okay. Well, excuse me? How many understand just liking him is not enough? Am I right? Well, you know, I like Jesus, so I don't have to go to church anymore. You don't have to. Amen. I like Jesus, but I don't have to go to Kroger anymore. I'm going to eat. I go to Kroger even when I got stuff at home. Hey Amen. I, I get something now because I live in Ohio. I might want to freeze it for a week like we've had the last couple of weeks. Hey Amen. Again, I like food with my meals. How many of you do? Okay. Acts 19, it says, he said to them, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said to him, these are, everybody said Disciples. Followers, they, they heard about Jesus and they liked him and they got baptized by John. But he said, have you received God's spirit living on the ends since you believed? Have you received the Holy Ghost? And they said, we haven't even heard there be such a thing as the Holy Ghost. How many, if you have never heard about it, you might not have it. Boy, I'm brilliant now. How many, if you haven't even heard about it, you may not be involved with it. Again, how many of you are not afraid of God or his spirit? Well, I, I, you know, I messed up. You know why he comes to you when you mess up? To fix you. When I messed up as a kid, my parents didn't come just to fix me. They came to whip me. And then that fixed me. God doesn't come to beat you up. He comes to restore you. His Holy Ghost is not to tear you down. It's to pick you back up. It's to help you stop doing stuff that's harmful to you. And to the, Am I right about it? It'll help you get rid of some of your habits and bondages. Oh, God, you, you know I'm in the right building today. I want you to listen to this. Uh, I'm going all the way back to the first verse. It came to pass when Apollos was at Corinth, and this is an associate of ministry of Paul, and Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus, and he found certain, I love this, he found certain of the disciples. Everybody say, I'm a disciple. And he asked the disciples, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? And they said, we have not so much as heard whether they be any Holy Ghost. 
He said to them, then, uh, unto what then were you baptized? And they said, well, unto John's baptism. They said, oh, I, I, I get it. I'm paraphrasing. Then said Paul, well, John truly baptized with baptism of repentance. He said to the people that they should believe on him that would come after him. That's Jesus Christ. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I want everybody to listen to me. The Bible says that there were those that had been baptized by John. How many... Okay, can I say it? Can I just be real clear here for a second? This is not Trinity. This is not apostolic. This is just truth. Listen, get your ears on. John baptized, and he didn't baptize in the name of Jesus because he didn't even know Jesus was the mother. He baptized them to be washed symbolically from sin so they could change. How many of you know repentance is when you don't just get excited about the preacher and the green chairs and the praise and worship team? Repentance is when you turn away from living your old life and now you let Christ live his life through you. I think we need repentance. How many sometimes find yourself living like you want to? Tell them off because that's what I do. When Jesus wouldn't do that, you took over his space and you messed up. Everybody said you need to turn around again. I know some people that are so messed up, they need to spin. Okay, you'll get that halfway to Kroger. Listen closely. They were baptized unto repentance. John came at the end of the law, and he baptized people because he said, you're a sinner, and you need to be forgiven of your sin. You need to get back to God. And he baptized them. What is the baptism? It means you died out to your mess. That old man died, and your personality, and your carnal man died, and now... God's will for your life is resurrected and now you're forgiven. How many of you are glad you're forgiven? How many of you can be forgiven and still not be full? I've, I've met a few Christians. I don't know if they're full of the Holy. I think they, a quart low. A gallon low. You gentlemen know that if you get several quarts low, it'll blow your engine. If you don't have oil. Well, that'll preach. There's some folks I know that I can hear them clicking. Which means they haven't had oil in a while. Anybody ready for a refilling of his spirit? Boy, this is good. My said, brother, you know, I, I, I filled up when I got saved. I, you know, the, I bought the car and it had oil 20 years ago. It's a miracle you didn't blow that thing a long time ago. I, I'm just talking to the mechanics now. Give me an amen. Look at this. What baptism did you? He said, well, you, you, you repented. You asked God to, to forgive you of all the sin that you were in. But John said, there's one coming after me that's mightier than I. I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. And I want you to be baptized into him. Here's where the confusion begins. How many of you realize Jesus told them to be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? Because that's the fullness. Jesus is the fullness. Everybody say, he is the fullness. Why are we arguing over this? Because the enemy wants to separate folks and make folks angry and build a different location to go to church at so they can baptize different. Come on, saints. How many of you realize Jesus was the fullness of the Godhead bodily? And if he said do it in the name of the Father, his Father, and the Son, and the Holy, it's the fullness of who Jesus was in the earth. And when you're baptized into him, you get it all. Everybody say, I get it all. And so the, Paul is saying, have you, have, you, have you got filled up since you started believing? They said, we don't even know anything about getting God on the inside. We just got washed. John said, I baptized with water, which is symbolic of washing you from dirt and washing away sin. But the one coming after me, he's not going to baptize you with water. Write this down. They're confused now. He said, he's not going to baptize you with water, but he's going to baptize you with a Holy Ghost and fire. Anybody know there's a difference in water and fire? Okay, no electricians in the house, right? What is beautiful about this, he is saying, I'm baptizing you as a symbol of washing away your sin. But the one coming after me, he's not just going to wash you, he's going to come and get in you. How many of you are glad you have God's Spirit on the in? Come on, say it with me. I have God's Spirit on the inside. Now, if we really have it, we're going to start acting like him if he's in there. We might even let him talk once in a while if he's in there. We might take his choice and his ideas. We might start acting a little bit more like him than us. We might decrease so that he can increase. 
How many like to live so much like the Lord that people think it's him? Don't go overboard, Pastor. You know, they wear dresses and they won't think Jesus wears a dress. I'm not talking about that. How many like to have his spirit rule your life? When people see you, they see the Shekinah glory of God all over your countenance. There's something about you haven't oiled yourself down and you don't have on some cream on your face, but there's a shine from the Spirit from the inside of your life that lets people know you have been in the presence of God and that you have a victory to give. I want to declare this very quickly because I feel like sometimes we get to the place that it goes ahead and it says Paul had laid his hands on them and the Holy Ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. I love that because sometimes we think, well, only the great people can do all those, those weird religious things like prophesy. Prophecy is just speaking in behalf of God about things to come. Anybody ever get a feeling in your spirit about what God is going to do? Don't prophesy unless God tells you to. Because we'll all find out if you're a false prophet or not. So just don't do it. <laughs> Anybody ever been prophesied to? Anybody? If I had all that stuff they prophesied to me, I wouldn't. Okay. Be careful who you listen to. I said, brother, I don't know. This prophet told me something. I've met prophets that are not even saved. Bishops that are not even saved. Okay? Because they got a title. I'm scared of titles. <laughs> are you my pastor? I'm not everybody's pastor. If I'm pastoring you, I'm your pastor. A few years ago, they got together and said, we want you to be a bishop so we can be a bishop with you. And I said, I'm only a bishop to those churches that I'm covering. Those pastors can call me bishop. If I apply and you apply and that works together, that's fine. I don't need a title. I get some people coming out of Bible school. They got a business card so long. It's got all the apostle, prophet, bishop, elder, deacon name on it. You have to look on both sides of the card to find out where they live. <laughs> and God says, who day? I mean, if you're living in sin, if you're not even in the kingdom, how are you going to be a prophet? How many just didn't know I was this smart? How many of you realize what I'm sharing with you can be life or death? It can help you make the right choices or the wrong. Be careful who you listen to. If people are not filled with God's spirit, don't let them tell you about your future. Am I right? If God's spirit is not a part of their life and they're not full of his spirit, how can they teach you about anything when they can't even control themselves? Somebody ought to give me just an amen right there. So the Bible said he laid hands on them and they received. Well, well I'm going to tell you, and I know you, this will really mess some of you up real bad. When I was a kid, they had what they call Holy Ghost nights where you could go get the Holy Ghost. And you had to go in a dark room and they would tell you, now just you know, pray real fast and, and, and then maybe the Holy Ghost will take over your tongue. And, and we got to where with the, with the people would say, Jesus, 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 because after you say, Jesus, 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 it almost sounds like speaking in tongues. And I think they were just tired of messing with it, so they just said, well, that's good, you got it, now go on. How many realize all they did in the Old Covenant, if I have it, I can just lay my hands on you and say, receive ye the Holy Ghost if you're ready to receive it. If you're washed in the blood, you're a candidate and you can receive it. You may not start prophesying at first. The first thing you may do is God may speak to you and God may use you to heal somebody that's sick. He may give you a word of edification for someone. How many know the gifts of the Spirit? All of them work in the Holy Ghost. So if you don't want to do any of that, you may not want this Holy Ghost. <laughs> Everybody say, get the full package. When I got a car, I got headlights with it. And a battery. And tires. And a heat seat warmer. Whatever that is. And a radio and a CD player. If I didn't want any of that, I shouldn't have got the car. Anybody want God's spirit to come in? Everybody say, I want him. Now, what's beautiful about it, when the Spirit starts moving, somebody getting ready to really get your eyes open because all of a sudden somebody's going to let the Spirit speak to them and they're going to begin to speak in a heavenly language and somebody that doesn't know them or is on the other side of the room is going to interpret what God just spoke. I'm going to say, well, that's weird. No, it's not. That's called tongues and then an interpretation. How many of God likes you to know what he's saying? Amen. You need to read what Paul said to the church. He said, don't just be out loud with your tongues unless... There's an interpretation because people get confused. It's all right. How many know it's a good thing to have it everybody privately? It's good to have it so that you don't drown the preacher out. But how many, there comes a time where God wants to talk and the whole body needs to hear what God is saying. 
I know this sounds like foreign language, but God's getting ready to move through this house. There's not just a wind going to blow in like this thing that happened for the last three weeks, but we're getting ready for the fire of God and a tsunami of the Spirit to hit the church and the body of Christ. I haven't lived all my life in ministry just to sit around and say, well, that was a cute service. That preacher got a good word. I like that what he said. That's a pretty new song. I want to be in the presence of God, and I want to be a part of a people that know how to take this thing down to the Walmart. I want you to take it wherever you go. I want you to come back on Sunday and say, God led me to somebody going through the worst time of their life. And I was able to minister to them out on the street in front of the Chinese restaurant. And I was able to pray with them and agree God changed their life because I was there carrying the presence of God. How many of we are the carriers of the presence of God? Otherwise, we're wasting our time. Have you received His Spirit since you believe? Well, we don't even know anything if there even is a thing called the Holy Spirit. Excuse me? So we've had people making fun of us for 30 years that don't know anything about his spirit. That scares me. How oh, the Lord is coming for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or blemish. The Bible said there are those that he passed by and he said, they're churches, but they're worshiping in vain. You know why? They won't let God in. If God's not a part of it, it's not church. It's a club. So let's just call it Spirit of Truth Club. Where we club you if we see you doing wrong. And club you if we don't like you. And club you because you're a different color. Amen? All you white and black folks should have said that amen to me on that. Because I'm Indian. How many of we got a lot of junk we've allowed in the church? Look at me. None of that's going to be in heaven. Come on. I don't like those people. Well, you're not going to get there then. Unless you love your brother or yourself. And Preaching too good now, so i got to close. Last week, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking, and, and we've been just doing a simple, if you will, an illustration. Some of you have a piece of paper. You've written down what it is that has to be shaken out of your life. You've asked God to remove some things out of your life. Today, I'm going to receive that from you. Look at me. I don't know if you're ready for this or not, but today it's going to begin. Well, I just satisfied living like I am. Well, then I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to people that want to go where God wants us to go. I'm talking to some people that got a family that's messed up and in sin and bound and diseased and addicted and perverted, and they just need to be changed. Are you a part of that like I am? How many of you are ready for God to go to everyone that you love and begin to shake them and stir them? Can he do it? Yeah. Say out loud, he will do it, and he's going to do it. Because in all of your kindness and all of your sending cards and letters and paying rent for people and, and buying them toys, that's not going to change people. It's going to be the power of the presence of Jehovah that brings life and restoration and a new beginning. And I'm ready to let that begin to happen. Can you say it with me? I'm going to change and everything about me is going to change. I, we're going to hear Tabby after a while talking about what God did. I don't know what it is, but sometimes God has to move you from McDonald's so he can give you your own corporation. Sometimes he has to move you from White Castle because you should have never been there in the first place. Amen. Just trying to get an amen. How many of you realize, if, look at me, please, prophetically, I'm saying to you, whatever's changing in your life is also shaking right now. There's a shaking in your family. Let it shake. It's shaking in your children. Let it shake. It's shaking in your environment. Let it shake. It's on the job. Let it shake. It's happening in my health. Let it shake. God is getting ready to move everything that is trying to kill, steal, and destroy because he came to give you life, and he came to give you more abundantly, and he didn't want it just for the preacher and the praise team. He wants it from everybody in this room to be filled up with his presence so you can have his will in your life. I'm going to shock you right now. I have never been in a church in my life all over America and other parts of the world where everybody was on fire for God. That scares me. The Lord is coming for a glorious church. Okay, I'll close. There's a lot of theories on rapture, a lot of theories on how that's going to happen or if or when, spiritual, natural. Forget the fight. When God draws his body to him, if you don't have his spirit in you, there's nothing for him to draw. Amen? You're just dirt until his spirit lives in you. And then you're eternal. So if he's coming for you, he's coming for the himself. 
and that part that he has played inside of your life. Amen. If you don't have his spirit, you ain't going nowhere. You're just dirt. I'm trying to be kind, but he's coming for his spirit. Amen. When Noah built the ark and he lifted up that family that was in covenant, one family. One family. When the water, same water, spiritualized water that changed John's baptized folks from sinners to, to believers. That same water of the Holy Spirit that came washing 120 in the upper room and turned to fire and filled him with God's presence. When Noah is being lifted up, it's the water that lifts him above the disaster. It's the word of God, which is Jesus. How many glad that he is also the Father and the Son manifest of the Father and the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Spirit of the Father and the Son? Don't get scared. How many of you understand if his spirit is in you, he's getting ready to lift you up? Noah was in the first great tsunami. And it didn't destroy him. It lifted him above the disaster of humanity. Are you getting this? God is getting ready to put your family in a boat. The week's up and coming. I'm doing a series on the arcs of God. And I'm going to implore you, beg you, build an ark for your family. And when the trouble comes and the tsunami of hell comes against you, and all the war comes, God's got a water that's better than the water of the enemy, and he's going to lift you above it, and your family's going to be on that boat, and salvation and deliverance. Everybody say, it's going to have its way. Everybody stand to your feet for just a moment. If you have your paper, we're going to declare that, but Angie, I want you to come for just a moment, if you will. All week long, I've been in special prayer and agreement for you. Whew. Come on, everybody in the house, look at me. I want you to say something along with me. The miracle of the power of God, the family of God, the healing, the deliverance, the blessings, start somewhere. It's going to be a different service today, but God's going to do something. These next two weeks are going to be totally different. Angie, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. Help me if you will. I want to honor you for the fact that what you've had to walk through. Most people that would have had to go through a portion of what you've been through have already lost their mind. It isn't just one thing. It's in every area of life. You've watched people that you love, serve, dance, celebrate, and then all of a sudden they weren't there to have your back. But you're here. I could give your testimony and it wouldn't be what a lot of people would think, but I'm just going to tell you, she's still here. I'm sorry, she's still here. And God said, Angie, I'm going to use you as a catalyst to begin a fire of anointing. And I'm going to cause it not just through the Martin clan of the household and through your house and your marriage and your loved ones, but God said people are going to look at you as a catalyst of the Holy Ghost. God, I thank you right now. The Bible said that when Paul spoke to them and said, have you received the fullness? Have you received it? Angie, I know he's on the inside. He's spoken prophetically to me through you. I know that his gifts are there because I've watched them function through the pain of your life and through the heartache of your life and through the, the trauma that you've had to go through. You didn't give up on God just because we, we hugged a little boy goodbye. You didn't give up on God because those that should have had your back walked away. You didn't give up on God because you had to suffer all night long and cry until tears wouldn't come out of your eyes any longer. You didn't give up because you went through pain that was unfair. It's God's Holy Ghost upon you that has sustained you to the heartache and the trial and the hurts, the disappointments, and the near death threats that have been around you for month after month, year after year. Angie, you were saying something prophetically earlier, and I don't even realize or think you realized all that you were saying. God said you're imploring the people of God to begin to dance, to get excited about God's presence, to celebrate those things in advance that haven't happened yet. The eyes of many at your work and the eyes of many in your family, the eyes of people around you are going to begin to see something brand new and fresh. Because what Paul did back in the days of Acts, 
I'm going to say something to you, not to say that you do not have his spirit, you do. But in behalf of those that have never allowed his spirit to come and rule and reign in their life, they're going to begin to be drawn to that same anointing that you love so much and you cherish it so much and you sing about it and you praise about it even when no one's around. You don't have to wait till later to dance. You can dance wherever you are. I want the entire body of Christ to look at me. I'm going to say this out loud, not only to her, but in a moment I'm going to ask you to let me speak a word of life for everybody in this room. We've got to have a body that is filled with God's Spirit if we're going to accomplish the mission that God has placed upon our life. So Angie, I say to you, I know that you have repented. I know that you're a child of God. I know you're a believer. I know that you've been a recipient of the power of the Holy Ghost, but I say to you afresh, as we anoint you fresh right now, I say to you, woman of God, for all the gifts that are before you and for all the gifts on the inside, not the empowerment of the fruit of the Spirit, but the gifts of the Spirit to begin so clear and so perfectly given that everybody will recognize you have been hearing God and in the presence of Jehovah. So I say to you afresh for a double portion, new beginning, receive ye the Holy Ghost in a new and a comp- perfect way for the power of the ministry that lies before you to dry the tears from your eye and to shake everything that has to be shaken so the kingdom can be and will and will be and it is established for the glory of God. Come on, let's lift our hands and say, Lord, I'm ready for this kind of a filling. I'm ready for this kind of a move. Come on, give him some praise for just a moment. Praise him because God is ready. Say it out loud. God is ready. I'm ready. Come on, say that. I'm ready. And God is ready. Come and help me a moment. I want everybody in the house to say, Lord, I'm ready to receive all that you have for me. I'm ready to receive the completion of my purpose. Sharon, I want to honor you right now in the public eye. For there are those that have not recognized you and some have said, she's religious. She's confused. No, she's anointed and she's called because of the power of the filling of God within her. She is able to speak with a new tongue. She is able to declare a prophetic utterance. Now, Father, I ask you to on this service to begin to give her a double portion filling. Let everyone around her recognize that she has been in the presence of Jehovah even though she is a believer. She is a staunch believer and a receiver. I ask you Father right now I command it upon you my sister woman of God receive ye the fullness of the power of the Holy Ghost and Father I ask you to perfect the gifts within her. Perfect the gifts within her. Let them come out Father as a word of oratory. Let it become God a wisdom word a word of knowledge and I ask your father let everyone be drawn like moths to the flame to hear the prophetic interpretation in Jesus name come on give God some praise for just a moment the presence of the Lord is here the power of the Lord's provision is here his anointing is here I want the praise team to come over right now we're going to stand to begin this thing God is beginning to take over spirit of truth There will be services where Holy Ghost speaks and nobody will have to preach and nobody has to testify. God begins to minister to the deaf and the dying and the diseased. Come on, come on, come on, come on for just a moment. Brother Dave, come and stand with me if you will. We're going to allow the power of the presence of God to have dominance and ruling and reigning in this room. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give God some praise for just a moment. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, join. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Trevor, come on up. Come on, Timothy. Come on up. Come on, come on, stand. I want everybody in the house to point your hand this way. We're starting something, and this is not another service in church on Sunday. We're reaching up to heaven saying, God, pour out from heaven all this world has to have if they're going to know you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Lift up your hands, if you will, everyone in the room as we're celebrating together. Come on, we're going to agree. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jen, I want you to say it with me. I receive... All of God's Holy Spirit, all the benefits, and the fullness. So I say to you, woman of God, receive ye the Holy Ghost and the complete filling up 
for every thought and every imagination and the fullness of the power and the plan and the purpose of the glory. Beth, open your spirit. God has made you very tender to his voice. His spirit controls and it lives on the inside. But the Lord is saying, I'm going to fill up. I'm going to fill up this vessel. Receive ye the fullness of the gifting and the fruit of the spirit. I release you to the manifestation of the fivefold and all that God has before for the glory. Give him some prayer. Right now, Tabby, the Lord is saying to you, Receive ye the Holy, receive ye the Holy Ghost. The fullness and the power and the anointing of God that's upon it. There's a unity right there. And the things that you've agreed about, they're already settled in heaven. That's why the shaking is bringing it forth. For the glory of our God, we commend it to be so. We give you praise and honor. There are, there's a responsibility on your shoulders greater than you could imagine. Several years ago, you were afraid to stand up and declare you're not afraid any longer and the Lord said as of this day you will never again have to think I'm on my own but when you open your mouth the Holy Ghost will fill it and it will touch lives that you could not have preconceived to speak to it'll speak to diseases and troubles and sin and bondage I say to you right now for the fullness again receive ye the fullness of the Holy Ghost let's give God some praise for just a moment Julie, you've blessed all of our lives. You've encouraged us with word and music and song. But I'm asking God to make the load light because God is going to fill up those heavy places with his spirit. He's going to fill up those lonely places with his spirit. He's going to fill up the painful areas with his spirit. I say to you, woman of God, be ye the Holy Ghost in the fullness of the power and the gifts and the fruit that flow through it will benefit everyone around you and all for the glory. We call that done in Jesus' name. Everybody agree with say in Jesus' name. Linda, I thank God because of the prophetic utterance that you have given time and again. I know that it's placed his spirit inside of you, but I'm asking God to do a greater work. And I say to you, woman of God, receive ye the Holy Ghost and the fullness of the power of that anointing so that there's nothing missing, nothing broken. And I break off the long terminated delays and hindrances. And I release you to the fullness of your calling in him. Can all of us in agreement say in Jesus' name? In Jesus' name, help me if you will come up and stand with us. While we're ministering, the Lord said, those that are key and those that are vital, all you want is God's will for your life. And that's why these last several years, God has begun to shake everything. There's still shaking to be done for manifestation to be complete. So I say to you afresh and again now, receive ye the fullness of I want to say this again. We've been anointed this week, but Haley, there's times that it seems like there's a war saying, what, what do the people need? What, what song will reach into their heart? What, what does a sinner need to hear? What does a sick and dying body, what does a broken family need to hear? The father said, I'm going to flow out of your mouth like I did David as he stood before King Saul when he sang and played and the troubling spirit moved against that evil man and settled him down. God said, you're going to have the tongue of correction. You're going to have the tongue and the song of the Lord. You're going to have the song of power. You're going to have the song to save and deliver and set free. And it's going to be the anointing upon that song that is my word and it is my word which is me. And I will go where your song speaks for me to go and I will set everyone under the influence of the environment of the presence of God I heard you today louder than ever before when you said my whole family can the body of Christ say shake everyone that's a part of our life start it today by the power of the Holy Ghost let's agree together in Jesus' name come on let's agree together Brother Mike, there's some new things beginning to take place. You're going to find new thoughts, new imaginations. You're going to embrace some blessings and kick off some dust from your feet. I command the presence of God again today to totally and completely fill you with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let the utterance come. Let the manifestation come. Let the insights and the deliverance follow. I command that for the glory of God. Everybody in agreement, say in Jesus' name. Say to the Lord, said he is shaking some stuff right now that has 
non-essential. He's moving some things that are just a burden upon your shoulders. He's moving some loads that have been placed upon you by others. God said, I'm going to set you free to speak a clear word and an authoritative word. I'm going to set you free to speak life in the place of death and deliverance in the place of bondage and to reveal corruption in its place and change it into deliverance and salvation and purity. And I release you for the fullness of the calling in the name of Jesus. Everybody say, be totally filled for the glory of God. His power, His presence, and the completed word. Trevor, I want to say it to you, and I want to say it to all of my Timothys. You are standing on holy ground right now, ready. Oh God, ready. Hungry and ready. More than ready. More than willing. Oh God, show me a place I can go. Take me to somebody that's crying. Take me to somebody that's dying. Take me to somebody that's bound in sin. Take me to somebody that's confused with religion. Take me to somebody and let me give them life again. Father, I ask you again to refill completely to overflowing. I don't want it just to fill him up to benefit him. I want it to overflow out of his mouth. When he opens his mouth, let it pour out to the dung hill and to the valleys and to the desert places. Turn them into an oasis of new beginnings. And for your whole house. I'm not afraid or ashamed for your whole house. And since you are a part of my heart, they're also my house. And we will receive it. And only the Holy Ghost can do it. Father, extract people from those realms that don't believe in the Holy Ghost to bring them into your presence so they can receive their fullness and the completion of their calling in Jesus' name. Bryn, I command the overflowing double portion of the power of the Holy Ghost to come up out of your mouth. It's not enough for us to know him and to speak about him. What an eloquence he's given to you. But the Lord said, now you're going to speak with the tongue of the learned and the mind of Christ. And God said, I'm going to begin to do things that I've never done before because you're speaking not words of the man of God that I made you to be, but you're speaking the words of your Christ with a clarity and a power and an inspiration and a revelation of the Holy Ghost. I ask you, Father, right now to affirm and confirm your servants. Be filled and refilled and continually filled with the power of the Holy Ghost for the glory of God. In Jesus' name. Everybody in agreement say, in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Lord. Filled, Father, till there's no room for anything else. All the hindrances moved, all the blessings complete. In Jesus' name. So, Diana, there's a long time that you have struggled. You've been around pure word and you've been around tender hearts and ministry. But there's also been an underlying vein of attack that has tried to rob you, to steal the joy. But the Father said, where men have left off, in many of those areas, I will use you to fill the gap and to encourage and enlighten and strengthen my people so there's no more darkness. And I say to you afresh this day, be filled with the Holy Ghost. The gifts of the Spirit and the fruits will follow in divine order, as you set my people free, filled and running over, joy unspeakable, clarity and perfection in Jesus' name. These last 30 years that I know of, you've been through many transitions, but the hardest parts you've hidden in your heart. The Lord said he's cleansing it up like a sponge going to the depth of your brokenness and the unfairness and the pain. I saw him sopping it up with a sponge not filled with vinegar as they placed in Jesus' mouth, but a sponge filled with the anointing of sweetness and restoration. Begin again, woman of God. Begin again in Jesus' name. Everybody in agreement, say in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you right now because you said if we love you and believe in your name, that you're willing to fill us if we simply are willing to receive it. Say this with me. Fill me with your spirit. Therefore, I say to you, be filled with the power of the Holy Ghost, be filled with a new spirit that you've never, ever before felt. Let the completion of that begin to work its work, even now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Let me touch you for just a moment, Pete. I, Pete, God is bringing you through some awesome changes. We're all proud of you, and we all love you, and we're amazed that you survived and that you love the Lord. 
But I say to you, man of God, you know God. You've been around. You've felt it. You've got the Spirit on the inside. But I felt like telling you, be filled with the Holy Ghost today. Be filled with the overflowing supernatural power so that that scripture that flows out of your mouth will come with a boldness and an authority and an integrity and an honor. Nobody can deny it's a word from God for right now. Father, there's been a lot of preaching going on, but now we need the manifestation of the Holy Ghost to turn that message into a life-giving experience to save the whole family, to heal the whole body, and to set the broken free. In the name of Jesus, we agree. Come on, let's give God some praise for just a moment. We do agree. We do agree. Father, right now, I command the commanded blessing. Man of God, I say to you, I know that you're a disciple, a follower. But I want God to begin to work for you what you can't work for yourself. And I say to you, my friend, be filled with the Holy Ghost. God is going to work in your behalf from the inside out. He's going to change everything around you physically and spiritually and naturally. And you're going to enjoy your journey. Those things that like tentacles from the past that try to drag you back into old thoughts and old pains and hurts broken off of your life. So you can enjoy today and enjoy your future. Your wife and family. We're talking about the family of God as well as your natural. You're going to enjoy the journey. I release you to the fullness in Jesus' name. Everybody in agreement say, starting now, all that God has promised is beginning to work. What's been hard is over. Now we're going to celebrate and laugh in the same place we once cried. Stability, Father. Stability, Father. Strength. I saw your feet. It looked like God put spikes and nailed them to the ground. I said, God, what is it? He said, I'm going to cause them to be able to stand steadfast in his blessing. I claim that for you in Jesus' name. A whole lot of prayers are coming to an end right now. Manifestation begins for the glory of God. Give God some praise for just a moment. Let's magnify His name. Let's praise Him. Tammy, you're a disciple. I feel God's Spirit on you and in you when I get around you. But today I'm saying to you, woman of God, because of the responsibility of the ministry before you, because of the load that you'll carry and the lives of those you're going to minister to, I say to you, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be baptized with fire that purges everything else and sets us free for the completion of our call in Jesus' name. Can everybody in agreement say, in Jesus' name? It begins now. Father, I receive and release unto Tom the anointing of the power of God. Disciple of God has your spirit, your anointing, your Holy Ghost, but you said to impart into your children a influx, a double portion. So I say to you, man of God, be filled, filled, filled with the Holy Ghost to the completion and Father, I praise you because you're already going before him to prepare the way. Just like you went to the past and you're obliterating anything and everything that would hurt or remind or wound, I release you to who you are by the fullness of the Holy Ghost in your life and the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit that's yours in Jesus' name. Can all of us in agreement say in Jesus' name? Now let's give God some praise for just a moment. Give him some praise for just a moment. Let's give him glory. Give him praise. That's it. Hallelujah. Something mighty is taking place. Thank you, Lord. I want every hand to be lifted up in this room. Come on, let every hand lift it up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Give me just a moment. This ministry has waited all these years to come to the timing of God where this happens. Brother, I'm afraid. You don't have to be afraid of God. You can be afraid of the preacher if you want, but don't be afraid of God. He's the only one that loves you when you're messed up. A thought came to me this week and said, how many friends do you have? And how long would you keep being a friend if you had to forgive them a hundred times? 
of the same thing they did against you? How many of you wouldn't still be their friend? God has forgiven you 10,000 times. He's your friend. Nobody loves you like Jesus loves you. Nobody cares for you. Can I just tell you that when Beth was up here sharing her testimony, I wanted to go up and hold her and lift her up. I just want to have her back. You know why? Because starting now, we're going to have each other's back. When you rejoice, I'm going to rejoice with you. Why are you happy? I want to be happy with you. When I'm crying, I want you to come and say, hey, how can I help you? How many we're a family? And if we're not, it's all a joke. How many we're in this thing together? So if you will, lift up your right hand and look at me. I say to you that are willing to receive the power of the Holy Ghost. See, sometimes it's the laying on of hands. I did this publicly, mainly for our ministries and our leaders. But also today, the Lord is saying is in the covenant, in the Bible, this is what God's people did. When the congregation came together and they would go into a new city and they would develop a new church, the man of God would look at the congregation and say, are you willing to receive God's Spirit? Are you willing to receive God's Spirit? Then all I have to do is very simply, I am the battery that's hot. I'm going to put the jumper cables on you and transfer what's from God in me into you. Somebody said, that's presumptuous. No, it's not. How many realize if you got a hot battery and I got a dead one, you can jump me. But the Holy Ghost is greater than that. Anybody that has the Holy Ghost can say, receive ye, and it has to come. Are you willing to receive it? Must Well, God might turn me into a prophet. That's okay. God might use me as a prayer warrior. That's okay. Are you willing to be filled up? That means you don't have to start letting some junk out and decrease so that that spirit can take you over. I say to you, body of Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as the body of Christ, I say to you right now in the presence of God and the holy angels, I speak to you and say, receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now I want you to lift your hands and say, fill me, Father, every day. Remind me that you are alive inside of me. I will listen for you to speak to me in every circumstance, every decision, every choice that I make. And I will always make the right choice and say the right thing if I'm obedient. Use me, Father, for your glory in Jesus' name. Now let's clap our hands and praise God because you're getting ready to take the Holy Ghost home with you. Everybody say, I'm taking the Holy Ghost home with me. We'll say it again. I'm taking the Holy Ghost home with you. Now, I, I may not take you to my house, and I may not take you to my house, but I'm taking the Holy Ghost to my house. Hallelujah. I'm taking him to my job. Hallelujah. I said, is it that real? It's more than that real. Forever and forever, we belong to him. Come on, say it with me. Forever. I belong to him. He controls my life. Close your eyes for just a moment, please. Give me just a moment. You know me for 30, over 30 years. I've never said anything quite like this, but the Lord said, there's two people in the room that God is going to help you with a habit. And the reason he's dealing with your habit is not because he's a mean God, but because you're on the verge of it turning into an abnormal cell of death. God is going to let you breathe clean, healed air. Receive it in Jesus' name. When the Lord got the disciples together, he breathed on them and he said, <sighs> the spirit inside of him that was the same spirit that went into Adam and made him a living soul that had been a dirt pile. Jesus said to the disciples, receive you the Holy Ghost. And they did. The wind of God is in this place saying, receive ye all that you need that lives in the Holy Ghost. Everybody in agreement say amen. Look at your neighbor and tell him I'm a new me. And I got some changes and some victories on my way. And look at me because everything's going to be all right. Everybody say everything is. Say it, everything is going to be all right. How many glad you came today? How many wish you hadn't come till next week? Well, if you said amen to that, then I can't help you anymore. How many realize we are in the presence of the Lord this morning? All the old things have passed away, and behold, look, all things become new. Are you ready to receive that? How many ready to hold each other accountable? 
How many know some folks you need to tell them, you need to get back on Facebook and do some deletions? <laughs> you need to watch your mouth. Come on, watch your attitude. Watch how you act around people. Because you represent God. Come on, you represent God. There's going to be some horrible things happen because people mess with God's kingdom this year. Come on, there's going to be some attacks against people that are messing with God's children this year. And I don't pray harm for anybody, but how many God's going to get rid of some stuff? You choose if you're part of the junk or part of the glory. How many ready to let God use you mightily? Amen. You may be seated if you'd like this morning.